So hello everybody and welcome uh, to my kitchen. Uh, today we are going to talk uh, yeast. Okay. Now, um, what I would like you to do as a bit of a challenge to you all is to um, be able to make uh, your own yeast and try and create some fantastic um, pieces from yeast. Um, okay, some fantastic pieces of food. I'd love to see what you could create. Um, I'm going to give you a recipe in a moment for a really exciting um, fruity berry uh, bread swirl that can be made out of yeast. So yeast doesn't need to be savoury, it can be sweet as well. Um, but I'm also going to try and give you some healthy hints on this one to um, get you not just the fruit, but get you lots of other uh, great nutrients into this one and lowering the levels of fat and sugar that you need to put into these ones for a sweet bread. Um, but I say make sweet, savoury, all different types starting from yeast. Now yeast is a biological raising agent. Um, so you might think about when you were doing cakes, um, you might be using um, self-raising flour or you might be using something um, with baking powder in it. Um, that's a chemical raising agent. We've talked about chemical raising before, but it's a chemical raising agent. Um, that's in self-raising flour. Um, that's what you might use to use cakes. But we're talking biological today. So that is a living microorganism, hence the biological part of it. Um, now, um, you can probably get it. You probably know it more often than not is when you get it in these sort of things. Oh, packets of, uh, seven gram packets of fast action dried yeast, um, which is great if you can get hold of it. But obviously we're in lockdown larder situations at the moment and it's quite a hard one to actually get hold of yeast in the shops. So what I thought it'd be really interesting to do is to see if you can create your own uh, living um, yeast starter, um, like a sourdough yeast starter culture which you can put into your food. Um, so you won't need to go out and uh, buy that. All we're gonna need for this is tap water and some flour to make this yeast for you. So that's the idea, the challenge on this one. So how do you do it? How is it made? How can you make your own yeast during uh, lockdown, a uh, lot of situations during the, the peculiar times that we're into? Well, like I say, yeast, um, you probably know it more often than not in, in this sort of stuff. So here we, this is, this is I'll show it up to the camera there. You can. Um, probably see that is the fast action dried yeast that you're probably aware of that you might find for us say from these um, little packets here um, the seven gram packets there the stuff we are looking for doesn't look like that at all it's very very different so I've got some um, I've got some here for you um, and it's it's a bubbling um, very sour smelling um, product and I've got a lot of, here's some of my um, yeast and this is what we call a uh, sourdough uh, yeast starter. Um, it it smells um, it smells uh, quite alcoholic, like beery. Um, it tastes. I'm gonna put a little finger in that. It tastes like a really sour sour sweet. But what we've got in there is a whole bunch of microorganisms. Okay, a whole bunch of them in here that are breathing. Um, living and breathing in here and I'm going to just see if I can show this up to the camera here to show you some of the uh, fabulous um, bubbles that go. This is literally bubbling away. Um, hopefully you can see that one on the camera there but this is literally bubbling away in there um, and what you've got in there we've got a species of microbes called um, lactobacilli um, uh, okay and lactobacilli all right um, and they're like a like a wild fungus really um, and they, they're floating around us and they're going to transform our food and into a wonderful wonderful breaded piece here um, I'm going to make some really nice pieces out of this like okay, it might um, it might seem a little odd um, to, to be putting these bub this bubbling mixture into your food um, please don't worry it's quite quite a normal thing to do I'm moving around a bit there um, it's quite a normal thing to do um, to be able to get, get our raising agents like uh, this, okay? Um, but so I want you to have a go with trying to do it. So how, how do we do it? How do you how do you get this? Um, this well, yeast is all around us, okay? So there are hundreds of different types of yeast, and it's all around us. It's in the environment. It's in there. It's 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 on the fruit. Um, okay, you'll find it on the fruit and apples. You're gonna you find yeast everywhere. Um, and like I say, it'd be great to see if you could do this. Well, um, the, I'm going to show you a recipe straight after I've spoken about how to make a um, yeasty fruit, fruity berry bread swirl, which is which is lovely. Um, uh, so you can obviously try and make this one with the packet stuff, but like I say, we'd like you to have a go with doing this one. So how do you do it? 
you need to create this mother culture. Da, 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 bubbling away in there. That mother culture in there. Um, you, you need to create this. Um, it's going to take you about a week to do. There's lots of different recipes online to do it. Um, but basically, what we need to start with here is we're going to start with um, flour, equal quantities of flour and tap water. Okay, just tepid tap water. So somewhere between um, uh, warm and cold, that tepid temperature, okay, because we need it just perfect. And then we need the flour. I'm going to say we're going to do equal quantities here of um, flour and water to make this one. And we're going to transform it um, so that it, it becomes really, really exciting. Now, don't be worried um, if it doesn't work the first time, okay? There's a bit of science going on in all of this. It, um, uh, it is very, very... Um, uh, I, I, I suppose you could say it's it's, it's going to last. Okay, so don't be worried if it doesn't work the first time, or if you think, oh no, I've killed it. Um, it's it's not going to work. Um, it's it's dead. It's it's looking grey. It might separate between water and um, gloopy stuff, and you might have a water layer on the top, or you might have a grey layer on the top, and you're thinking, oh, I don't know what's going on. These, these will work. Just go with it. And say it'll take about five days to produce, but you'll end up with the most amazing breads that taste absolutely phenomenal. And the great thing is because we're going to be using cultures from your house, uh, where you are around around the country, okay, you're going to end up with some very different types of varieties, which is great. Which is great. You have different, uh, slightly different tastes to it because we're going to be picking up yeast um, uh, when we when we do this one. So how do we do it? How do we start it off? How do we get um, a bubbling um, matter in it, this bubbling yeast in here. How do you get your create your own yeast pets in essence? Although, like I said, it's not an animal, it's more like a fungi. But um, how are we going to get these pets that are going to blow the bubbles into our food? And the bubbles, by the way, the, the gas they're producing is the CO2. Okay, so we, we want that CO2 being um, put into our food that's going to help to raise our food, raising agents. Okay, um, same as the CO2 would be produced um, with a baking power up. Um, and that's obviously baking powder's got an acid and an alkali um, that react together, uh, neutralize, react together, but create a carbon dioxide that will, uh, is the gas that helps our food to rise. But with this one, the carbon dioxide is going to be produced by the yeast. So how are we going to get the yeast working for us in here? All right, um, so uh, to do this one, to do this one, you know, we need to start with uh, um, equal quantities. So I started with 300 grams, so 300 grams of uh, flour in there. Ideally, you're looking at an unbleached flour, um, um, but you know we'll go with what we've got during that down live situation. Have an experiment with this. Have a play with this. But um, 300 grams of flour. Okay. Stir that up. Mix that up with 300 milliliters of uh, water. This tepid water. Okay. And, and just leave it. That's it. Put it in a bowl. Stir it up. Leave it. Um, cover the bowl. Um, doesn't need to be uh, sealed. Just put uh, some tea towel or a bit of loose. Um, Cling film or the like on the top of it, um, loosely cover it, okay, um, and then put it somewhere in the kitchen, out, out in the garden. If it's a nice sunny day, um, I've had it up. I've had it up in the, um, the, the, the by the boiler as well. Just nice warm places for it to be, uh, room temperature or, or slightly warmer um, for it to be. Now, after the first day, you should start to notice some bubbling going on, some activity going on there. If you don't. Give it a day or so, and you should again to start to see some bubbling activity go on. Give it a little stir. That's fine. Keep it active. Um, we want to work with this yeast, okay? Um, and and it should start to smell a little bit. So obviously, let's say sourdough. This is sourdough starter. So um, there will be a sour uh, smell to it, as well as a sour taste to it as it starts to bubble as well. Don't worry about that. That's going to be great for our food. So just just go with that, okay? Um, if you get that bubbling stage in a day or two days, what you then need to do is you're going to remove, pour away half of the mixture. Okay, pour away it. Don't, don't be worried by this, it sounds odd, but pour away half the mixture. And then what you're going to do is you're going to then uh, add equal quantities back in. So 150 um, milliliters or grams of flour and, uh, so, and water. Okay, you're going to go back in there, tepid water again. So you're going to put equal quantities of those back in. Give it a good stir, give it a good mix up, uh, mix up shake it up. I, I'm, uh, you can see I'm using like a kiln with masonry jar. Um, so we got some, yeah, these sort of um, jars are, are, are brilliant. Um, the reason why these are so good is because they've also got on the top of them um, these loose fitting um, tops. So if you, you can just literally just lay it on the top and very loosely do it. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, um, what you're going to find after the first day or so, you're going to keep repeating this every day. Pour away half, 
add 150 milliliters, 150 grams of water, flour into their equal quantities and stir it all up, then leave it for a day. So you're feeding it every day. Okay, and it's important, it's your pet, in case you're a little pet here, you're gonna feed it every day, make sure it, you're, you're tending to it. Okay? Um, but like I said, don't, if you forget one day, it's very, very resilient. These are extremely resilient. So, so don't be too worried if you miss it for that, for, for a day, okay? So just um, maybe do it later in the day or, uh, it, it, it's good, it'll be very resilient for you, it will work for you. Okay, we're gonna keep doing this for about five days. After five days, you just start to see a pattern going in. You feed it, and it will start to really start to bubble up, especially if it's a nice warm day. I, I, uh, and what I do with that, I'll actually put it in a dish, um, as well as putting a lightly covered top, just so we don't get any flies or anything, but in the dish, in the garden. Um, we, and, and you'll probably see sometimes it, it got really, really active, and, and she really started to bubble away, and she would like literally bubble all over the top, which is great. Um, and you know, and you'll you'll see it actually literally bubbling away. So a little dish underneath is quite good. Or if you put it in, again, I put it up in. It was cold outside, so I put it up in the boiler and again. Put a little dish underneath because if it does go really active and really starts feeding on well, all those black all that's in the flour there, um, you will start to bubble over the top too. Um, and and you just keep doing that. Now, um, by the end of five days, you should have something that's really really sour, really bubbly, and that's what you're going to be using to put in your food. Now, how much do you put in your food? Well, I kind of put like 10 times. So uh, if you think about your little sachet here, um, so you've got your little sachet there, the seven grams, uh, what, what you'd normally put for seven grams of uh, dry, the dry, uh, fast action dry yeast, I put uh, 10 times that. So I put 70 grams to uh, around about 250, 300 grams of flour. I'm going to make, I'm going to show you a recipe straight in, in a minute and we're going to go through and show you how to do that one. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, the other thing is it takes... Uh, 10 times the amount of, uh, sorry, um, so we, we said 10 times, it's going to take um, 10 times the amount of time to actually prove as well. It's a lot slower than this fast action. Obviously, as, as it says in the tin, fast action is going to be working faster. This is going to work slower, but we've got time. We've got time on our hands. You know, this is, like I say, during the time that we are, we're off school at the moment, we have got that on our uh, uh, time on our hands. So we can have some time to do this one. So what I mean by that, well, I might be normally proving it for an hour or a couple of hours. Um, for this, um, I'm gonna be proving it um, for like seven, eight, nine, ten hours. So uh, how does that work? Well, you're gonna to need to do, make your bread, and uh, I do really do, or pizzas, so if I'm using, I, I use this for bread, I use this for pizzas. Um, so what I do is I put it in overnight. So do it, then do it before you go to bed. Put it, um, put the put the bread um, in the say in an airing cover by the boiler somewhere warm, or just put it on the side for somewhere warm, and leave it overnight to prove, and then come the morning. Make make those stuff. Not just say bread, pizzas, uh, croissant, be 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 posh with it. Um, I've made all sorts of this, and we're going to show you now a fruity berry bread swirl, which is absolutely amazing to go for for this one. So um, I'm now going to show you, but that is your challenge. There's loads of recipes to it, but I would like you to create um, your own uh, yeast sourdough, yeast uh, starter, what we call a mother um, uh, a mother uh, of, of culture, mother culture here um, for your yeast. And that's what I'd like you to do. Um, you're going to find, uh, say, lots of different, if, investigate, have a look. Some people do other things with it. They put apples in it. They put fruit in it and flavor it in different ways. Um, you can try with different types of flour. So you can go with just a, you know, you can go with a, an unbleached white flour, but you can try rye flours. Um, try different types of flour with this one to create your own uh, yeast biological raising agent. Um, so challenge for you there to have a go with that. Now, how, what can we make this? So let's get on with the recipe. Um, I've got a recipe for you here. It's a fun little recipe and it, uh, we use a healthy twist on it because we're gonna use bananas and yogurts and fresh fruit. Um, but don't worry if you haven't got all of this because I'm gonna tell you some different alternatives as well. So before we start, uh, we need to look at um, our getting ready, what we call our mise en place. So I'm gonna take the recipe. Uh, let me just pull up the recipe. So here is the recipe. Uh, so you can see there that there's quite a lot going on in that recipe. Um, so I'll keep uh, uh, popping backwards and forwards from the recipe so you can see how we're going to be using our yeast biological raising agent to make our banana berry bread. Um, uh, so on this one, so it's a quite uh, a good banana berry, berry bread. Um, now you need to get your ingredients together. So um, here are um, the uh, ingredients breakdown for that.
And here is the um, all the equipment you're going to require for today. So here's the equipment list for you as well. Now, um, as well as the that we need to put all this together now. So you've got your uh, equipment, you've got your ingredients. Um, where do we start? Um, well, before we start, we need to make sure that we are ready to go. So, okay, so we need to make sure that we have got all of um, um, our stuff prepped in the right place. Now, that preparation time is what we call our mise en place. Um, so we need to make sure that we are doing that correctly. Now, mise en place, um, mise en place is, is about putting in place, okay? So getting make sure you've got all that equipment and ingredients in place. Uh, how do we remember that one? Well, um, we use a nice little abbreviation called HATTI, H-A-T-T-I-E. Um, So um, what does Hattie mean? Well, um, we're going to be, it stands um, for something, and I'm going to go through that, what that stands for um, with you uh, uh, on this slide here. Okay, so back to me. Um, the, so uh, H, H stands for um, tie your hair back, or you could wear a hat, or um, uh, if you, and I've actually got very little hair, so I'm not going to need to worry about tying my hair back this long. Um, putting an apron on, A is for apron. Um, then we need to uh, make sure we've got our tabletop anti-backed, uh, cleaned properly, properly, properly cleaned. Uh, very important during these peculiar times that we're into. Um, the next T is get a tray. A tray is a useful tool to have at hand to collect all your equipment and ingredients on to get to your area. I being the ingredients, E being the equipment. Okay, so let's get make sure we got that ready. Uh, now, um, to do all this one, um, the first one was I uh, get your, uh, like I say, a hair, tie back, or wear a hat, and also wash your hands. So let's do this one together. Let's go and wash our hands together. I'm gonna uh, move over and we're gonna go and get on my apron on, A, use my apron up as well. So let's get ourselves ready to go. Here we go. I'm just gonna move myself over around the kitchen. Um, and let's make sure we are ready to go. So, um, that just down here by the kitchen sink, um, uh, we need to make sure we are properly ready to go before we start. So, uh, how do we do that one? We need to make sure we wash our hands properly. So, getting yourself some soap, um, you need to make sure you are brushing your hands on the middle there, but also in the fingers, fingers there, thumbs, thumbs, uh, back of the hands, don't forget those, and finally the wrists, all covered with some lovely um, hand wash soap. And the next thing, you need some hot soapy water, okay? So I've got some hot soapy water here, same again, um, both together there, and then you need to do um, the nails, there we go, thumbs, make sure you've got both the thumbs there, the back of the hands for you, and the wrists, okay? So make sure they are all properly cleaned. Fabulous. Um, then make sure, just switch the off. Uh, there we go. We're going to then go and get ourselves a nice bit of kitchen roll just to clean our hands. Fabulous. All right. Um, so uh, that's hands cleaned. Um, next thing we need to do is make sure you have got your aprons on and you're ready to cook. Okay. So um, grab yourself your aprons. I've got my, I actually got my, my uh, chef whites here. I'm just going to put those on. But make sure you are make, wearing your proper attire, what you should be wearing for cooking. For most of you, uh, that's going to be grabbing the uh, apron, but make sure you do that before you start to cook, okay? So I'm just going to make sure I've got my proper attire on there. I'm going to put my uh, whites on, but as well as my whites, I am going to wear an apron as well, protecting the stealth from the food and the food from you. Let's make sure we are keeping clean and tidy, okay? Um, so I've got my apron there. Let's get my apron on as well. Fabulous. Tie that round. Um, so I'm nearly ready to cook. I'm just going to roll my sleeves up because if I had long hair, I'd have that tied up or be wearing a hat as well. Um, I haven't, so I'm not going to be doing that. All right, there we are. Sleeves rolled up. We are ready to cook. Okay, um, remember you should also make sure your um, area is clean and tidy. I'm just going to go back to my area now. Uh, so we're going to make sure your area is clean and tidy. 
and we are ready to go with all your equipment on your tray and all your ingredients on your tray to be using our yeast today. So we've got, um, so we're using yeast biological raising agents today, key to this one. Um, okay, so um, let's, uh, let's start with the um, first step. The first step we're going to need to do on this one is we're going to need to measure out the flour. So we're going to be putting in some flour on this one. We're going to be putting in 300 uh, grams of plain flour onto this one. Uh, okay, another more tips. Let's do some tips and tricks for uh, the lockdown larder situation. Now, we've said this uh, to a few of you before, but I'm going to go through this one again. Um, we need to be making sure, well, we need to be, be working out how we can get hold of some of these ingredients. And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help, so um, hopefully we can give you some ideas on, on that one for our yeast biological raising agents. Um, to be blowing bubbles into, okay? So it needs to be able to, we're going to be creating CO2, which is fab. We need to be creating CO2 into something. So we're going to be using some flour. I've got some flour here. Where do I get hold of flour during lock, um, a lockdown larder situation? Um, fabulous. So let me answer that one for you. So uh, very simply, go to commercial suppliers. Commercial suppliers that might be providing schools, uh, pubs, uh, cafes, that sort of thing. Um, they are now starting to deliver to um, to deliver to, to, to homes, which is great, great news. Um, so we've, um, I'm using the same supplier we use um, in school. Um, that's a company called Bid Food, and uh, they deliver to homes now as well, right across the country. So that's Bid Food for that one. But you can use plenty, there's plenty of other suppliers that are out there that are also doing this, the, the very same thing. So we need to go uh, with 300 grams of that. Um, okay, so you might be thinking, well, I don't want to be buying in bulk. I don't want to be doing that. How else could I get flour? Well, the other option is, is um, contacting pubs, um, um, or um, cafes that are closed um, that might have ingredients still that need to be used up. Um, give them an email um, and let them know you're in need of these things um, and then um, or give them a call and then if they can always leave them outside as part of social distancing and you can go and collect them and you can pay online or whatever. So um, there's a few ways you can get flour rather than be creative rather than thinking of um, going to the shops or it not being available in the shops in the same way that, that we, we've been creative about finding yeast. Um, which again, you might not be able to get uh, from the shop, so we can create our own sourdough starter. So that's what I'd like you to have a go with. But you know, uh, what, what, whatever we can use really um, during these situations. So um, that's how I'm doing it. Right. So I've got myself there while I was doing that. My 300 grams of flour. Ta -da, fantastic. Um, now with the um, 300 grams of flour, we are going to be putting something into that. Now um, we said we're going to be putting into that some some uh, yeast so um, if we do need to put the yeast in so uh, you can if you if you if you if you obviously normally in normal circumstances you might be able to get some um, fast action yeast you could put a seven grams of that or I am going to go back to my beautiful beautiful um, mother culture here my uh, my sourdough starter and she it smells absolutely uh, amazing. Actually, smells of a beer because um, if you think about beers and the like, they're using yeast to them to ferment their to ferment the goods to actually create the beer. In fact, you could in the olden days you could use the the, the fluffy carbon dioxide froth on the top to actually um, make bread out of. Um, okay, so that would be another way. But I'm going to use this. So I'm going to. How much do I want to use? I'm going to use instead of seven grams of fast action yeast, I'm going to use seventy grams of this. So I'm just going to scoop down to this. Gloopy, gloopy. Uh, that's what it should look like. You can see that. That is absolutely amazing. It's bubbling away there. It's sour. Um, I'm going to put one scoop right down to the bottom here. Two of this gloopy, gloopy stuff. Can you see that? Look at that going in there. Two, um, three of those. Here we go. Here it goes. It's just going straight in. Okay. Um, Four. I'm going to scoop down to the bottom here, get some right from the bottom. Four of that. Um, don't worry about using it all up for um, for your food there, because obviously you're going to be feeding it, so it's going to be getting some more. Um, five. Five. There we go. Look at that stuff. It is absolutely wonderful. Loving it. Um, Okay, we'll do. That's it. We've, we've got we've got our seventy there. Um, so that is in there, ready to go. Um, we have the microbes in there, microorganisms, the microbes in there. They um, it through there. The grow a growing culture is in there and ready um ready to do all the work that we need. Which is for, in this case is going to be to be creating the CO two um that's going to be blowing up our food, that's going to raise our food, and that's going to be our biological raising agent.
Okay, um, so uh, that's in there. Um, now, what are we going to be putting in with this one? Well, uh, we're going to be putting some liquid in. So in with this one, we're going to be putting in 100 uh, milliliters of uh, warm, tepid uh, water. Okay, so um, I've got some, got some there. So get, just get your measuring jug at the ready for that one. Um, so uh, my measuring jug there. And you're going to be pouring that um, uh, into there. So we've got 100 there. So I'm just going to pour that one in. Um, into my bowl as well. There we go. In it goes. In it goes. Tap of water into there. And I think that should do us perfectly. There we go. So that has got the yeast. We've got the warm water in there. Um, we've got all of that going on. Now, um, you might normally, when you're making your bread, be putting into this one a lot of fat as well. Okay. Um, some fat into there as well. Now, um, we're trying to show you some alternatives here, trying to keep it um, uh, some healthy, uh, healthy alternatives to fat. So what could you use instead of fat um, for, for this one? So the, my idea with this one is a banana, okay? So you want a one large banana. I've got small bananas to, um, this week arrived who are online orders. Uh, yeah, so um, we're probably going to use um, one and a half of these ones, but um, banana mashed up. Now, don't worry if you've got the old um, uh, effects here, what we call the... Um, got some of this mottling effects going on here. Well, um, it's actually aging there. So we got some, um, but you might find that the banana will be going inside. It's got a brownie colour. Don't worry, because that's going to make it extra sweet. Okay, um, that that, um, that browniness of the fruit, and you, it's going to brown anyway when you open it up um, through the say through the, what we call um, uh, enzymic browning. It's going to be going brownie colour when you open it up, and like with any, any kind of fruit. But so don't worry if it's brownie colours. Um, it's not a bright yellow. It's got this mottled effect. And don't worry if that's in there. I'm um, using a lot sweeter. Um, fruit's going to be a lot sweeter. Now. So uh, what I want you to do here, we're going to grab the um, grab the banana there, um, and we are going to mash it up. Now you can literally just crush it up with your hands, um, or if you wanted to, I'm just going to use um, a, a bowl and a fork here. Just grab that one. Just going to use a bowl and a fork, and, and just use the back of the fork there. Can you see that one? I'm just going to use the back of the fork, and I'm just going to mash that one into there. Let's, let's do that one there. So I'm just going to mash that one into it. Here we go. Mash, 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 mash. All of that down into a lovely, lovely puree until it's almost smooth. Okay, so I'm just going to brush that one down. Bab, 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 bab. Oh, a nice crushed up banana into there. Now you might be thinking, I don't like banana. I don't want banana in there. That's gonna taste um, absolutely horrible. Don't worry, don't worry. You're not gonna be, um, you're not gonna be able to taste a lot of the banana in this one. What you will be able to do is you're gonna be able to. Um, it's gonna be. Gonna give us the like, right consistency there. It's gonna add um, the, um, uh, just the bulking out that as well. Um, so don't worry about uh, the flavour too much. You're not gonna get a lot of the flavour, but it's a great alternative to putting into foods um, instead of um, you know when you, you might normally have you put put your baking fat in there um, into that one. But instead of baking fat, we're going um, we're gonna go with another uh, B. Instead of baking fat, we're just gonna be going with our Bananas, okay. Um, uh, so uh, bananas are brilliant for the potassium, great, um, great energy source. When you're out running, I love to get a banana beforehand. Um, real quick, uh, really good for energy release. But for say potassium, lots of good minerals and vitamins in there as well. So um, the banana, mashed up, smoothed up banana um, is there. We can crush it all up. We're going to get that banana going into our mix. And, and that's really lovely. I'm just going to get that one, pouring that one straight into our um, breaded mix there. So that's in there as well. So um, what we got going on now? So we've got uh, banana is in there as well. I'm just going to show you that one so you can see. There we go. Now, can you see that one? All the bananas in there as well. Everything's in there, ready to go um, for our um, for our banana um, banana and berry bread or banana fruity twists with yogurt. Now, yogurt. This is the next one. These are going to be like um, again. We're looking for instead of putting loads of fat into this one, we want to be trying to think about alternatives. So I'm going to go with some fat-free yogurt. Um, how much fat-free yogurt? We're looking about um, 60 grams of fat-free yogurt. So let me get my Get our clean spoon there, and let's just measure this one out for you there. So I've just got some um, some uh, fat-free yogurt. I'm just gonna oh, spoon's already in there. There we go. I'm just gonna get some of that yogurt, and I'm gonna be pouring that one in. So lovely big bit dollop of yogurt going in there. 
Um, I'll just get two of those, but it should be about two large tablespoons. If you haven't got um, scales at home, I'm going to show you the spoons as well. So um, two large tablespoons, there we go, in that it's going to go as well. Um, plop that in there. Um, we've got a wonderful bready mixer here, messy mix here. Um, so you've got the uh, yogurt in there, um, two tablespoons of yogurt. You've got a banana crushed up in there, the one large banana or a banana and a half crushed up in there. Um, and that's replacing our, putting a load of fat into there. Um, with the, so there's going to be a sweetness from the banana as well, so we don't need to worry about too much of the sugar. If you did want to put any sugar in there, um, I, would, I would keep it to the minimum. Um, we've got a little bit here, I think. We need to put a little bit in there. Uh, let's just grab that one there for us. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, just gonna put in there. Just gonna be putting in there one one teaspoon of uh, sugar into there. So I've got one teaspoon of sugar into that one as well. Uh, and that is the start of our fruity bread with a fruity filling. We're gonna be um, filling this one with a beautiful filling as well. Um, so we're ready to go there with our bread mix, all right? Um, so next thing is, uh, grab your uh, wooden spoon. There we go, we've got a wooden spoon. Uh -huh. And we're just going to beat all this together, okay? Um, beat it all together, um, and then uh, we will get on and um, start to knead it and work out what we're going to do with that one afterwards, okay? So um, I've got my bananas, so leave that one out of the way. Okay, I'm just going to move all of that out. Right, uh, so lovely mix there, wooden spoon, in it gets. Let's stir all of that together, okay? Just stirring that one all in. And what you're gonna start to see is well, we're gonna get the flour all mixed through there so we get a nice smooth mix. What's happening with the flour? Right, then we got the yeast, which is great. That's gonna be blowing bubbles into um, our food or it's gonna be creating CO2 that's going to our food, the gases in the food that's gonna help to make our food right. But what is it going to be putting that into? Well, it's going to be putting it into a network of gluten. Okay, now that gluten. So we're going to be having, putting it into a network of gluten. There we go, gluten. Um, it's going to be going into a network of gluten, um, which is great. But we need to create that network of gluten. Gluten um, it, we can create from create putting two proteins together. Um, those two proteins are gliadin and glutenin. Um, gliadin and glutenin um, have got two properties. Um, they are both elastic and plastic. Um, we are going to create, put them together um, to um, have a new protein called gluten. This new one here, this is what we need. Um, we, are, we want this new one here and that is going to create our network. Now that network is then going to be elastic and plastic. Um, think of bubble gum, okay? So if you think of bubble gum, the more you chew it, um, the, the, the bigger the bubbles you can get out of it by you blowing into it. And, and that's the kind of thing we need to do with the gluten. We need to create this gluten. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going we, to create gluten, you just get flour wet, okay? So we're going to get the flour wet and then you need to start to work it. We need to add some energy in there, okay? So we're going to add that energy by um, really starting to pound it. So I am just really turning, there we go, turning that one, turning it all around, uh, really starting to pound it. Uh, now, if you fancy, I've got my old, uh, there we are, oh, my lovely KitchenAid there. You could use my nice, nice sparkly KitchenAid there. Um, you could use one of those, um, a bread mixer, um, and then you can um, uh, put the mix in, into there with a dough hook on there and um, be, be working away on there. Um, and that's going to be adding, adding some mechanical um, energy to it, um, and we'll be transforming both those two. Um, the two proteins that are in the um, in the flour, like I say, from uh, the flour, um, the gliadin and the glutenin to make gluten, and our gluten network that they, they're going to blow in, the stretchy plastic elastic, um, uh, which they can then get the CO2 into, that's going to expand when we bake it, and the two together is then going to be giving us this wonderful mix. So uh, I'm now going to really, I'm hammering it away here, yeah, here we go, stirring it away, stirring, 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 until I have got myself a beautiful uh, dough ball. Okay, once I've got my dough ball, I'm going to empty that out onto the side, so I'm going to just put, um, if you've got a flour dredger, or if you can just use your hands if you want to there, um, um, yeah, we're going to be putting that one in there. Um, so uh, I'm just going to be putting this one into there. Now, 
there was one other ingredient before we start to start, start it together that I'm going to be putting into this one um, that is going to make it a really lovely sweet piece. And that ingredient that I'm going to be putting into here um, that you may have seen from the original recipe there is I'm going to use some vanilla. Okay, not just any old vanilla. Oh, no, 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 no. I am going to use this stuff. This is absolutely amazing. This is what we call Little Pod uh, Vanilla. It's a natural vanilla paste. And if you, uh, if you want the best of the best, this is, this is the one that I, I always use. Um, it's a fabulous, fabulous, um, it's a fabulous, fabulous type of um, paste. And uh, what the great thing is, I'm just gonna hold up to the camera so you can see a bit more. There we go, here we go, can you see that one there? Um, so um, it, is a, it really is a delicious paste. Um, each tube can contain the equivalent of 20 vanilla pod, um, pods, okay, seeds and all, uh, that's it, so 20, 20 of those in each one, um, it's really good, um, one teaspoon um, equals one vanilla pod, okay, um, approximately, it is pretty amazing stuff, um, once you've tried this, you'll never go back to any other kind of paste or, um, it, it is really, really nice, um, if you can't get hold of this, I mean, you can get it online um, from uh, www.littlepod.co.uk. Um, but if you can't get hold of this one um, uh, for whatever reason, um, you could use an, uh, an extract, and they do do their own extracts as well. But you don't want to be going for these little yellow pots of vanilla, okay? Those little yellow pots, um, uh, vanilla's not yellow, it's, it's not yellow, it's, it's, a, it's a dark, um, dark brown, almost blackish material, okay? Um, so you, you, that, what's that yellow? Well, the yellow is an artificial stuff. It's an artificial flavor. The artificial flavoring is called vanillin. Okay, and it's 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 like a, made from petrochemical base. It's it's not. You know, we put in petrochemicals, petrols into your petrol. No, you want to be going for real vanilla wherever you can. And oh, it's worth spending that little bit extra for, for a real vanilla. I'll show you where it's, it is. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. Um, here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit on here, um, and you can see. Can you see that on the camera? I'm going to go quite close so you can see that. Look at that. It is just amazing stuff. Smell is divine. Okay, if you want to put. So, I um, highly recommend that. But, I mean, if you can't get hold of it, try and go for a, please go for a, a, an extract rather than a flavouring. Okay, we want to keep it real. We want to support those farmers that are doing great work to get hold of this stuff. You don't get vanilla farms. Okay, vanilla's um, grown. It, Rainforests, they grow up on the side there, there of trees, they grow round trees. You, you have to go up up into the rainforest to grab this stuff. So we want to be supporting those people. That's why it's so expensive to get hold of this stuff. You do you're, you're going out into the jungles to get this stuff. It's amazing stuff. It's like black gold, they call it. More some of the most expensive spices you can get. Anyway, vanilla. Get yourself some good vanilla, get your paste it, paste or extract into there and give it that final, final twirl. And you're gonna see. I can actually see in here now, I can see the little um, uh, vanilla seeds from the pod there that are actually going through this one. And it smells, oh, it smells divine, it smells divine. Right, okay, so um, our sweet bread is there. I'm just um, just getting that one together, stirring that one through. And as I do that one, obviously, um, I'm, um, my yeast is active um, because I'm using a, um, a sourdough starter, yeast sourdough starter, um, but if you were using a packeted 7 gram packeted uh, fast action yeast, this would also be active. Um, now, okay, let's say you want to do this with this recipe really quickly. Um, you haven't got any uh, packet yeast, um, you're not ready to actually be using, you got your, your sourdough starter, um, your, your, your mother culture isn't quite mature enough yet. Um, so what else could you do? You could use self-raising flour. So we could go back to what we talked about before, um, a self-raising flour, which is um, a plain flour with baking powder in, um, uh, and use a chemical raising agent to raise it and create that c uh, CO2 that's in your food. You could use that one instead. So th there are lots of options for this recipe, so don't worry if you can't. Um, if, you don't, if you don't want to or can't get hold of the bananas, you could just replace it with some baking fat, so about 60 grams of baking fat, um, softened uh, baking fat so, uh, into this wooden would work as well. But we're trying to, trying to keep a healthier options here if we can. So that is now coming together. Now, once you've done that, we're going to just say, use a bit of flour dredger or just use a handful of flour. I'm going to put that onto my work surface. Here we go. Onto the work surface there. And then I'm going to um, empty out my now beautifully smelling 
wonderful dough onto this work, uh, work surface. Uh, and now it's time for kneading. Um, as with any bread making, whether it's a savoury or a sweet, we need to start kneading these things together um, into a beautiful dough ball. Okay, so we need to start um, kneading it. And I'm just going to quickly talk you through um, some little tips on how to knead your bread for you um, to make with, um, whatever you're making from it, um, your, your yeast, you could be, um, but uh, for making your bread, we need a good kneading. Now the kneading process again is going to develop that uh, gliadine and gluten. It's wet and now we're going to add in more energy like we did with the stirring but this is going to be a lot more vigorous as we start to um, knead away on this one. So I'm going to show you um, how we do that one. Um, so actually I'll move the camera down so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. You can see my hands there. So um, if you can see my my hands there, hopefully you can. Um, so all, what I've got going on in here, um, I've got my bread mix and what I'm doing is I'm pushing down into it and then folding back. So I'm pushing down and folding back, pushing down and folding back. If you're standing up doing this one, um, that's great. Pushing down, then you put one hand behind your back and then push right into it and fold back. Push right into it and fold back. Um, you could also use um, two hands, which is a bit more power on my hands. Um, you could use two hands and go one way, then the other, then the other, then the other. And, and to get into a motion there. But you want to be doing this one between five and 10 minutes to properly develop that stretchy gluten network. So the CO2 is going to be going into and then expanding our baked items um, for when we get them um, to, to the oven. So we get them to the oven and then um, the gas will expand um, still further, what we call physical aeration, in the oven and um, as the baked goods start to expand. Right, um, now that's doing well. Um, you need to be continuing doing this one, um, like I say, for um, about five or 10 minutes um, of continuously kneading this one together, okay? So um, then let's, uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Okay, so we've been going now for um, about uh, five to ten minutes on this one. Um, how do I know whether it's done? Well, it's going to be depending on the, um, how strong you are, big muscles. Um, you want to be um, really kneading into it, or whether you've been using, um, like I say, a fancy uh, device, kitchen tool like a KitchenAid. Hmm, very nice. Um, but uh, if you um, if you are stronger, then you may take a bit less than the uh, ten minutes. Uh, if you you may be only around five. And um, what we're looking for is we've got a beautiful uh, dough here. You put your thumb into it. I don't know if you can quite see this on it. You put your thumb in, and you should start to see that. Can you see that one? I'll just show you one again. Press that one in. So press that one in. You should just be able to see it bouncing back, okay, that bounce back, that, um, now, so two properties of the gluten, is both elastic and plastic, so we've got both elastic and plastic, and it gets one from one of those proteins, which is uh, gliadine, and the other one from the other protein, um, uh, from glutenin, okay, so we've got elastic and plastic, um, and uh, we have got an elastic plastic dough ball. Brilliant. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Um, depends again on what sort of yeast you are using. Are you using a fast action yeast? In which case, we now need to leave this one for around about an hour. Or are you using a um, sourdough, hopefully you are, using a sourdough um, starter uh, yeast, in which case you need to be leaving this one um, for a day or overnight. Okay, so um, it's going to depend on, on which of those you've done. Um, but what you need to do, need to do is you need to put them into an oiled, um, into a nice oiled uh, bowl. So you need to put these into a nice oiled bowl, um, and then uh, we are going to uh, leave it. Now, uh, oiled bowl. So what I would suggest you do, so you've got a bowl here. Let's grab ourselves a bowl. There we go. Um, you're going to need to uh, get yourself a bowl to put it into, and we're going to need some oil. Let's grab some oil as well. There we go. Um, so got some oil there. Um, so got some good quality oil. Um, and then you can either use a, a new paintbrush that's not been used. That would work, or a pastry brush. And you're going to um, then um, oil the all the way through. So just pour that one into a to a little dish. There we 
go, a little bit of oil into there. And then we're just actually gonna paint the outside of the bowl, okay? So um, with, say with a brush or a pastry brush, we're just gonna paint around the bowl nicely. Um, this just stops the, um, the sticky, uh, the sticky um, dough from sticking. Now, very interesting. Um, the actual word gluten um, it, it derives from the same as glue, um, both from uh, a Latin, which is to to stick. Okay, so there we go. Um, so uh, gluten uh, and glue used to come in tins. Glue tins, um, glue tins, gluten. Um, both a uh, sticky thing, right? And this one is quite sticky. Um, so don't worry about it being too sticky. Um, okay, into the bowl. Um, and uh, we then need to get our bowl, um, cover it. Um, so you need to cover it, so it's going to hopefully double in size. Um, lightly cover it with, um, you could use clean film. Um, I like to use a tea towel over the top of that. Um, you know, we minimize the plastic use. Um, so cover that one and then leave it for, um, depending whether it's a fast action yeast or um, your sourdough that you've made, um, depending on whether it's going to be one hour or seven to ten hours. Okay, so one or two hours or seven to ten hours. Um, it will depend on that. So uh, let's fast forward the clock here and we'll come back and I will show you um, the, how that's looking. Okay, um, welcome back. So um, you can now see um, that I have now got something that has beautifully doubled in size and you can see the air pockets in there. I can show you that uh, just before we look that up. Can you see all those wonderful air pockets in there? Not only can you see the wonderful air pockets but, um, uh, that the, the gluten network has created, but um, they all can put loads of CO2 in there. It's really puffed up, it's very spongy, okay? Um, and and that's, that's what we want. We want this kind of sponginess, um, which is beautiful. Um, right, so what am I going to do with this one now? Um, I am now going to start to work with this dough. This dough is nearly ready now to, to get, get into the oven. Um, so you're gonna need to preheat your oven to uh, 220, gas mark seven. Um, uh, you've already been there, maybe 200 actually would be okay, um, depending whether it's fan or not. Um, but, um, so 200 would be good for that one. And we're now gonna be, once you've preheated your oven, we're gonna um, start working with this one. So go, go preheat your oven. And let's work away on what we're gonna do with this fruit bread now. Um, so we've got um, our dough, uh, we need to now stuff it with wonderful, glorious fruit. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. So let's uh, let's get our um, well, where where we're going to get the fruit from. Again, we're in lockdown larder situation, so you might not be able to get any fresh berries. Um, you might not be able to get hold of um, those any of anything um, like that, which is fine. Okay, so if you can't get hold of them, then there's some alternatives. We we have some answers for you. Um, so the answers are um, two 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 answers really. Um, you could use some. Um, tinned, um, tinned fruits. There we go. Some, some um, tinned dough. All that. Tinned fruits. There we are. Some tinned summer fruits, which would be great. I'm um, still going to get all the vitamins and minerals from those ones. It's still very healthy. You're still going to get uh, you, from your five a day. Still going to be fine with that one. Or you can go with some frozen fruit. So we got some frozen fruit medley there. So you can go say tinned or frozen. They will both be fine if you can't get hold of fresh, and there'll be a beautiful filling there. I'm going to show you how to make our filling in a minute. Um, so um, either one will do on this one um, to go into the middle of this one. So how are we going to do this one? So let me um, let me just get some. I'm going to put a bit more flour on my work surface, and we're going to need a rolling pin at this point. Ah, but you may not have a rolling pin. So if you don't have a rolling pin, what could you use? So I've I've got I've got my my rolling pin here. Um, but if you can't get hold of a rolling pin, what could you use? Well, you could use something like a milk bottle would be absolutely fine. Um, a glass bottle, just obviously be careful not to press too hard, but that will, that will work to roll this one out. So we can try and find an alternative for you there. So don't, don't worry. Um, uh, don't, don't think you can't do this because you don't have a rolling pin. You can, you could just use your fingers okay, with this one. Um, we, we could do this. So I'm going to put a little bit more flour onto our work surface here, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this one. Okay, I'm going to turn my um, dough out, my lovely puffy sponge dough out now onto the work surface um, and I'm just going to just bring it back into a ball. Um, if it's got a little bit crusty uh, on the top, don't worry about that. I'm just going to, oh, it actually smells delicious. I don't know if you can uh, have a look at some of the air pockets there and the strands of gluten that you can see in, in there. I'm just going to hold it right up. It's beautiful. 
beautiful network of gl gluten in there holding this together. Um, so um, I'm just going to um, put this one together, mold this one over, integrate it into a nice ball, mold it very lightly into a ball there to make our dough. Okay, um, so there we have our bread dough. It is looking lovely. I'm just going to now mold it into a rectangle. So what are we looking for? Um, the idea is we want to create um, a sheet of A4 paper out of our dough. Okay, um, so let me um, let me show a rectangle, or uh, if you will, like an oblong type shape. Um, so if I'm going to, um, so if you can see there, um, we've got um, it. And you could just press it in. Um, I'm going to use a rolling pin to roll it out. Um, so I'm just going to roll it out into a rectangle now. Um, here we go. Roll it into a rectangle. shape okay um, then what we're going to do with this rectangle shape is we're going to just just um, dimple it use our fingers there to dimple it all the way over the top so we're creating our A4 sheet of paper there there we go um, so we've made that into a rectangle okay there we go into a rectangle beautiful now we're going to spread our mixture over the top. So we need to make ourselves a mixture. So um, get, get yourself a bowl. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing up um, uh, a filling to go onto the top of that one. So I'm going to use some, some frozen fruit. Final thing we're going to be doing here um, before we get this one into the oven, we're going to uh, fill it and shake it. Okay, so this is the last thing we're going to do. Just going to get a handful of berries. There we go, just a, a handful of berries there. Okay, just get some of those into a bowl. Um, how much do you want? Well, you want around about 150 grams of these this fruit here. Okay, and I'm just going to put those in there. 150 grams of fruit on there. And um, again, we need to squash them like the banana. Now, um, you could use um, the back of a spoon or a fork, and we're just going to literally squash these down. Um, these fruits down to make a mush. Okay, so um, I'm going to use my hands on this one. I'm just going to literally squash them up um, and make a tiny mulchy mush. Okay, and that's going to go over the top to make our bread. Okay, so I'm just going to literally squash them down with my fingers. Let's get really mucky with this one, and then we'll roll it up and we'll get it into the oven. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, roll this one, mash it all up. Here we go. Mashed up, mashed up, mashed up. Ah, oh, I've got mucky fingers and I've got a mush up mess there, which is lovely, really, really good. Okay, and um, what I'm going to do with this one? Well, we want to get it into a sauce. Okay, so we're going to get this one into a beautiful um, puree to go onto this one. So I need to put in some a uh, little bit of um, a little bit of corn flour into this one, um, a tablespoon of corn flour, um, a tablespoon of sugar into that one, just a little bit to, to, to do to take the tartness away from it, and then we're going to roll it out. So let me just uh, let me just get, get the corn flour there. Keep my hands down while I'm doing this one. So I'm just going to put the corn flour into that one. There we go, corn flour now. So corn flour. A little bit of uh, corn flour there. Let's so say the corn flour will, um, sort of stuff you might find on uh, gravy there. That's just going to add a nice uh, thickness to it. So I'm just going to add that to it. So a bit of corn flour into there. A tablespoon of the corn flour is just going to go into it and it's going to create a beautiful pink um, filling there. So um, corn flour is in there. Now, as well as the, the corn flour in there, I'm going to put a little bit of sugar in there just to take the edge off it as well. Um, again, if you want to put a little bit more of that vanilla in there, you could do. I think you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to put a little bit more um, vanilla into it. I think it's a better option, the best quality one you can on this one um, to get that one. Um, so in, in it goes. If you've not got vanilla, um, you could try some other ones, uh, some uh, other other flavorings into there as well uh, if you wanted to. But I'm going to stick with. Okay, so I've got my mush there. I'm now going to spread that. So there's 150 grams of uh, fruit. Um, we've got uh, corn flour and sugar. But before I do that one, just to thicken it up, one last time I'm going to put an egg in there as well. So I've got an egg. I'm just going to crack that egg in there. Okay, in it goes. Um, eggs in there. Going to beat that all together. And uh, that's going to be beautiful to um, go in there. there. See that wonderful pinkness that I've got going on here. We're going to spread that 
onto here. Okay, here we go. Let's spread that gloopy pink puree uh, mix into the middle here. Here it all goes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Spread all of that all the way over. If you've got lumps of fruit in there still, don't worry about it. It's going to be beautiful. Um, I'm just going to say I'm just going to put the light in there. There's a couple of lumps of fruit in. Don't worry, you worry about that. It's still going to taste lovely. Okay, there we go. Put a bit more of that on there. Right, we are nearly there. I'll show you what this looks like now. There we go. All right, let's have a look. So if I um, move the camera down, you can see there that I've spread that over almost like a pizza there over the top. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to roll this up like a Swiss roll. Okay, I'm going to roll that one up just like that. Now don't worry if it starts to escape. I'm just going to roll that one up and it's going to be a lovely gooey mess. Okay, um, so we're going to roll that one up so it's completely done. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, cut slice each of those rolls up and we're going to put them into a tin okay and we're going to bake those in the oven and this will be our fruit berry swirls okay so I'm just going to roll that one up beautiful 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 it looks a beautiful pink color little bits come out the outside but don't worry about that please don't worry about that um, uh, it'll, it'll still taste absolutely divine and what will happen is when you bake this one off um, it will end up um, moving out to, this, to the right shape for you, okay? So um, we've got a little bit just coming out the end there. That's fine. Don't mind that. Um, so we've got um, our nice roll um, on there. Now I'm going to just put this into a round, round of tin. So I'm just going to grab a tin for us there. Um, so what you need to do is to get some uh, greaseproof paper, some greaseproof paper here, um, and draw around the base of the tin. So um, they've got our tin there. I'm going to draw around the base, base of it. Um, and then add about a centimetre on the outside, and then we'll put a circle into the middle there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut, put our swirls in. So let me show you. You need a sharp knife for this one. Um, you can use, so you might have different types of knives at home. You might have like a, a larger chef's knife or a smaller paring knife. Um, I'll show you the larger chef knife. Also be careful with knives. Knife safety is really important. Um, make sure that you always hold it at one knife at a time. You hold it with when you're moving around the pan, the point of the floor blades behind you when you're walking one knife at a time. Be careful when you're washing up, never let it drop into the washing up bowl. Make sure you clean away from yourself dry, and uh, make sure it's dried safely away. So be careful with knives. Um, make sure it's grown up and knows what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to just show you down here now. You should be able to see um, that large sausage. Um, there we go, in the middle there. Um, now we've got, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice down sections like this. So if I can just see that, there we go. Um, I'm going to just slice down pieces there, about uh, two fingers worth, two and a half fingers worth, there we go, just slicing through each one, again don't worry if it oozes out, alright, I'm going to put them upturned into the middle, so I'm going to put them around, sorry, around the outside of my tray. So just tap them down, push them down. Put that one up as well. And like I said, what I'm doing there, I'm just putting them around the outside. Press them down again. Really messy recipe, this one, isn't it? Love it. Put them in the middle. There we go. So this is my banana berry bread. And I'm going to put that into the oven 
and we're going to bake that one off. Okay, just make smooth that one over, make sure they're all Go, smooth over. And that one's going to go into the oven. That's going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes um, into the oven there. Um, and then we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, that's going to be in the oven between 200 and 220 gas on 7. Okay then, everybody, so I've just got those out of the oven. Um, the final thing to do is to get a little bit of water and icing sugar glaze and um, to brush them over the top. And this is where we are up to. Hopefully you can see those on the screen there. That's our beautiful bakes. Um, spiraled fruity scone twists. They look absolutely a bit hot. There we go, straight out of the oven. Uh, and I will post some more pictures of those for you. Um, but they smell mm, 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 absolutely delicious. So this is my offering using yeast biological raising agent, using my sourdough starter yeast, um, and it's made some wonderful foods. You can also have a go at making your own types of foods using your own sourdough um, starter, your own yeast, um, using a biological raising agent. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, have a fantastic time. Take care, stay safe, look after yourself and look after everybody else around you. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.